Oh, actually, um, it's it's a long history. I'll, I'll ch- just cut it short. Uh, Safer Care Victoria was formed as a safety and quality in healthcare government agency two years back in Melbourne. And that was uh, because there was a review into a health service where there was a failure of safety and quality in um, maternity and newborn care. Um, and that's how Safer Care Victoria came into being. So when I joined Safer Care Victoria, I was looking for a very good program, which is an integrated sort of thing, a very practical thing, um, which I can apply into the new things because it was a new, 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 newly formed agency. And I was looking at not only the basic tools of safety and quality in healthcare, but also something which I can continue for a long time as a continuous education sort of way. Um, and learning from the, um, the the international experiences, and and that's how I I came in to, came um, to know about the program through the internet, um, and it suited me really well because um, it amalgamates uh, not only the theoretical side of things but also brings in the um, the the standards from around the world. So it's it's really suited me well, and and the internet was the one that that I, I, actually I was able to. Um, come to your website and look at the fellowship um, uh, program at your end. Yeah, sure. So um, the, the, the thing that made me really um, very, um, it was, a, it was a, actually a magnetic thing for the program for me because I was looking at something which I can continue while I'm working. Uh, and uh, it amalgamates both um, my learnings in the sector. Like, for example, I can go into into the um, safety and quality and healthcare workshops and other things, and I can continue in, uh, things in my job to learn, and that I can amalgamate with the program. So I think that that really suited me really well uh, while I'm working um, because um, uh, I don't have to um, do any extra effort. Um, I can actually get the credits what I'm doing as well. Plus, uh, I can learn from the program itself. So that attracted me to the program more. Uh, I can I can actually give you a list of benefits, um, but I'll I'll just uh, mention a few over here. So um, the one that I have already written in the blog and that will be coming in the newsletter tomorrow is that that I have learned really good methodologies of uh, applying the safety and quality in healthcare improvement things, uh, which was really suited to our scenario over here. So I have learned a lot of things from from the European countries, which were the case studies in in some of the webinars. I have learned a lot from the case studies um, in, in Australian scenario as well, because uh, there was uh, one um, one thing which I really remember because that was from Michael Gotten in in um, um, in the uh, Royal Australian College of Surgeons. So I came across this case study and I, that was really relevant to my work, and I was really happy to see that you know I am not only getting the international experience but something which is very local as well for Australia. Um, so I've learned a lot from that as well that how to evaluate things. Uh, how to uh, not only rely on the internal evaluations, but also go for the external evaluations, what you, you you will look at, the measurements and the safety and quality in healthcare, qualitative, most of the times don't work, what are the quantitative measures which you'll be looking at, and also that not only integrating the basics of quality in healthcare, but also uh, going into the advanced level of making into, in, it into an improvement science. So I really like that that and picked up really well from the program. It is really helping me now as well. So it's a continuous journey for me. Um, In one way, it has helped me reach my goals because I'm um, refining the indicators of maternity and quality in healthcare um, really every month in my organization. So that has really helped me nail uh, the indicators now um, and um, I think the methodologies which I have learned and um, applying into the public domain is really helping me well. So that that was one of the goals to refine the indicators of safety and quality in healthcare in Australia, which I'm working towards. 
um, and it's a continuous journey of goal setting for me because the next thing I'm looking forward is to collaborate more with the international partners in this case um, and uh, having background of having lived in Dubai and um, and working with Malaysia and um, USA and Pakistan so I think that what my goal is to create or or work in a um, very um, international driven safety and quality in healthcare. So I think that that ISQA has provided me a good opportunity to collaborate with multiple partners, and uh, I'd see that going on uh, on a continuous basis. Yes. Uh, so that the the first thing I've applied is refinement of the tools. Um, so um, that will be coming out in the um, in, in the blog tomorrow as well that I have written for the newsletter. So we do a, a Victorian Penital Services Performance Indicators Report um, in Victorian state of Australia. And uh, what, what actually we were struggling with is that, that we were not able to publish on smaller health services because of their data and um, their, 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 their small sample size may them really vulnerable and um, it might not be the uh, true inference which we made from data but I was looking for the tools that I can actually uh, carry on that data transparency to even the smaller health services. So one of the methodologies that I came across in one of the webinars in, uh, in patient safety module uh, was to look at a funnel plot in which you can actually uh, take volume into consideration and adjust for it. Um, and uh, I have applied that in the in the public domain in the report uh, of the uh, parental safety safety performance indicators uh, just this year. Uh, so we'll continue that, and um, in that way, I was actually uh, suggest to um, to actually publish on the smaller health services. And that's the first thing I've applied from the um, ISQA learning. And I, I actually look forward to continue on learning and applying tools more. Oh, it's a wonderful feeling because um, I was struggling to find um, actually the resources uh, that can be seen together, uh, for example, for leadership and safety and quality in healthcare, for uh, patient safety, for patient-centered care, for qualitative studies, for evaluations. And I think that what has benefited and um, me from the, this community is that, that the feeling of having all the things on one platform. So if I want to, um, if, I, if, if I'm struggling with something and I, I want to look at, for example, say leadership in um, safety and quality, which is, uh, which I actually, um, uh, which I actually discuss more with the health services which I'm involved in. So I, I go to the ISQA modules, I try to look at the webinars, the case studies, and uh, it's a wonderful feeling that I have everything on one platform. Oh, learning about the case studies from different countries. Um, I really enjoyed in doing the case studies from around the globe and how the people um, are actually diagnosing their challenges, how they're solving it. And also the um, really um, one of the case studies was uh, which which I um, can relate to in this scenario was that that how actually um, the failure is picked up from the health service, but then um, to make the system level change, how it actually has to be escalated to ministers or regulators and uh, what went wrong and how it was communicated to say, for example, the colleges or uh, ministry or the regulators and how, how it was solved. So I think that it was uh, really fascinating for me to learn from these real case studies and um, uh, what will I be doing uh, or I be doing differently in uh, when when system failures do happen or what I will do differently to prevent such failures happening. One of the things that stood out for me was that the real global community that the program is creating. Um, when, when I log on, I have a lot of uh, people that I can go to, for example, I can look at the directories of the fellows, I can look at the directory of the board, I can 
email them, I can contact them. I have made real good um, connections on LinkedIn because of this fellowship program. Um, I have um, I've, I've followed the tweets from the uh, from the fellowship program itself. So I think that that um, really stands out for me. Just the notion of this continuous learning in the safety and quality in healthcare. Oh, of course, and I've started that already. Um, I've, I've actually um, recommended that program to a lot of people in my organization who will be uh, doing this program in near future. Um, I've also recommended it uh, to people around the globe when they asked me on LinkedIn, LinkedIn that how, how I found the program, how it benefited me. And I'm also in continuous to uh, continuous communication with those people and I'm, I'm um, guiding them how to uh, look for the modules or what will they benefit from in their given scenario. Oh, um, I think that uh, whoever is um, planning to learn and um, uh, learn more in the safety and quality in healthcare is quite a great platform to connect on. Uh, not only the fellowship things, but also the continuous education, which continues after you do the fellowship um, uh, program. Like, for example, it's my second year of the fellowship and I'm, I'm doing I'm working towards maintaining the 40 credits that you have to do for the program. But um, I think that um, it's a very integrated program in itself. And uh, I'm really thankful to ISCOA to provide the opportunity.